Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the IPFW Athletic Center. Tonight's men's volleyball match between the IPFW Volley Dons and the George, Matri George Mason Patriots. Tonight's match is a non-conference match and features the number 13th ranked Patriots against the number 14th ranked Volley Dons. Let's go right to game time will be coming along in just about 10 minutes. First, we have a little brief interview. I had a chance to talk with Coach Arnie Ball, IPFW men's volleyball coach yesterday, and we'll cut to that interview right now. Welcome to this edition of Coach's Corner. I'm Jim Cawthorn. Alongside with me is IPFW volleyball coach Arnie Ball. Coach Ball, welcome back to the Midwest. Uh, you spent the past week out in California. Can you tell us a little bit about the competition you faced out there? Well, Jim, we played uh, really well. Uh, our initial match against Santa Barbara uh, went five games with them. And the match was about three hours and 20 minutes long. And that was a little bit of a surprise because I expected us not to play extremely well early. Because we didn't get out there until uh, Saturday morning, uh, late Saturday morning. Time to get in the hotel and everything, it's late Saturday night. And we played early Saturday, uh, Sunday evening, and played really well. And Santa Barbara is, uh, I think, ranked number four in the country, number five, something like that. And has a real nice team. Uh, then we had Monday off and went down to uh, Northridge on Tuesday. And Northridge is ranked uh, fourth or fifth also, one, in one of those positions in the country. And we played a good match against them. Uh, not as good as I would like, however, uh, but we played three really solid games against them. They're very big, six, seven, six, eight kids. Uh, so we were not totally discouraged, but not real pleased with that performance. Then went uh, the next day, next afternoon, as a matter of fact, and played USC. USC may be as strong a volleyball team as I've seen in a long time. Uh, and they, they whipped on us. We had ASB is up. And then we played Long Beach on Friday. Went four games with them, uh, played real well early, uh, won the second game, and then came back and just emotionally drained for some reason, didn't play very well. So I think uh, we always learn some things when we go out there. We'd like to win a match or two, or all four for that matter. Didn't, uh, so we have to come back and uh, readjust uh, our thinking a little bit to what we have to do. Uh, the fact that we're out there and didn't win any matches doesn't mean anything as far as the conference and the NCAA tournament is concerned. We now have to concentrate on our conference and be competitive there and have a chance to play in the Final Four. Coach, what do you know about tonight's team? George Mason comes into the tonight's match with a 17-7 record. They played uh, Ohio State and Ball State about the same number of times you have and uh, incidentally have the same record. They're 2-1 and one against Ohio State, 0-2 oh against Ball State. Do you know much about the Patriots? I know we saw them play at Penn State when we were out there, and uh, I know that they have a left side hitter that's an outstanding athlete and really a great player. The fans will enjoy watching him play. He's only about 5'11", but he literally jumps over the net, and he's got as quick arm strength and swing as anybody in the world, probably. They also have a big middle hitter that's a pretty nice player. Uh, those two kids dominate their offense. Uh, their setting has been a real questionable, so I'm not sure what they're going to do. I, I just got off the phone with Coach Hanson a little bit ago, and they played them on Monday evening and beat them in three, which was really a surprise to Coach Hanson from Ohio State. Uh, said they're having some setting problems and passing problems. So we have uh, what they're doing right now. Coach and I share our scouting reports, uh, and uh, we feel confident that if, if we come out and play with a, a lot of intensity, serve the ball well, that we can be successful. Coach, uh how has your team stacked up so far this year? Do you uh, were preseason ranked number 10 in the country. You're presently ranked number 14. Is the team where you expect them to be? You're starting two freshmen. You've got one senior on the team, so it's a you know pretty young squad. You know, how, how have they progressed so far this season? Well, after we uh, had played at Penn State, I thought we were ahead. And then when we came home, Bobby Kramer, who starts for us in the middle, one of the junior kids you talked about, broke his hand and that put us behind. Uh, I really thought that, that we'd be a little further ahead than we are right now. And a lot of that had to do with the fact of uh, Bobby breaking his hand because it's really uh, made us make some adjustments in our offense. And, and we weren't as deep at the, in that position as we are in some of the other positions. And so that's hurt us. Uh, the young kids have adjusted fairly well. Uh, we're back uh, juggling the lineup a little bit because we've had some kids not play up to what I feel is their potential. And so we've been, been juggling that a little bit. Uh, 
I'd, I'd like to think that, that we're going to get back on schedule. Uh, Bobby should be back in a couple of weeks, and that should help us put back on schedule. We've made it a, another adjustment in our team, in our, in our team uh, positioning, and we're going to put Fred in the middle. As we know, in California, and they all had six, five, six kids, six kids in the middle, and our six, two kids just couldn't handle it. And so if we're going to be able to compete at that level, we've got to have some bigger kids in the middle. So we're going to put Fred back in the middle and give Andy Heffron a shot to, to play a little bit more and, uh, and see what happens. So I, I think that uh, we'll be all right. It's just a matter of we've had to make that adjustment because Bobby gets hurt. Well, Bobby Kramer's kind of surprised me a little bit. Last year he was injured about as much as I guess he's been injured this year. And he came on early this season. He's leading the team in attack percentage of 41%, which is just a phenomenal rate. Second, the team in kills, and second in digs before he got hurt. How is, uh, I mean, had you counted on Bobby to be this you know, successful this season? No. <laughs> just got to be honest and say no. Uh, Bobby is a, has worked really hard and is a real overachiever, uh, athletic and physical. But the thing that Bobby has done is, is that he has really attack the game and the attitude that you've got to play uh, and give everything you've got all the time. And it's paid off. He's, he's worked really hard in the weight room. It's helped his uh, jumping ability. He's really worked hard uh, in, in our, in our preseason training sessions. And it just showed, it showed that, that indeed uh, through hard work uh, you can become an overachiever and be very successful. Uh, and Bobby's also the kind of personality that if it's allowed to to, uh, to be used, uh, it, it kind of just walks out on the floor and says, you got to beat me, I'm not going to let you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the IPFW Athletic Center for tonight's men's volleyball matchup between the IPFW Volley Dons and the George Mason Patriots. I'm Jim Cawther, alongside Lauren Jeeber. Lauren will be playing bring you tonight's color commentary. And Lauren, tonight we have two of the country's top ranked teams. Yes, uh, IPFW is currently ranked 14th in the nation and George Mason University who is currently ranked 13th. Um, tonight is definitely gonna be an exciting match. Uh, the reason being IPFW is not uh, sustaining their top 10 ranking and along, alongside George Mason, they are not sustaining their top 10 ranking. So it's gonna be an exciting match. Now, Lauren, earlier this week, George Mason's been on a Midwestern tour, and uh, they played Ohio State and Ball State. Well, let's get back to that in a little bit. Now we're getting to the starting tonight, starting lineups. First out for George Mason's number 20, Mike Swobe. And there's number 19, Chris Gunrold. Also for the Patriots, number 17, Bob Rubino. Number 16 is Dag Erlinson. Erlinson's a 6'3 freshman from Sweden. Fifth starter, it'll be number 13, Ralph Stupuvita. And finally, the big little man for the Patriots, number eight, Uvaldo Acosta. He's only 5'11", but Arnie Ball says he can jump out of the gym. That's definitely true, Jim. I played against uh, Acosta in Sports Fest in 1983, and he's a definite gun for George Mason. The coach for the Patriots is Wayne Stalick. Wayne has been at George Mason for about 15 years. Now we have the Volleydon. Starting for the Volleydon is Andy Heffron, a six-foot sophomore from Shoreview, Minnesota. Number seven is Dan Springob, a 6'4 junior from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. Keith Skippy Gergarter, number 10, a 6'2 junior from Dayton, Ohio. And making his first collegiate start for the Volleydons, number 13, Tiff, Tim Heffron, a six-foot sophomore from Shoreview, Minnesota. And number 15, Fred Malcolm, 6'5 sophomore from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And IPFW's All-American, Jay Goldstein, number 12, a 6'4 junior from West Dallas, Wisconsin. The Volleydons are coached by Arnie Ball, assisted by Denny Johnson and Lisa Sheehan. And Lauren here gets a little help in there when you're not up here announcing. Right, cut away now for the point of our national anthem.
Florida IPFW is returning for a four-game road trip to California this past week where they played four of the country's top ten teams. Is it going to be a little bit of a letdown coming back to the Midwest for them, or what's the situation there? No, not really. Um, I believe that uh, they're going to come back with a good attitude because of uh, the way they played out there was not what they would like, so they've got to be fired up. They have to keep in mind that they're 2-0 and in the conference and not let the Midwest affect them right now. George Mason, been a little bit of a surprise. Ohio State beat him 3-0 on Monday, and uh, then they went down to Ball State, who's been probably the best team in the Midwest so far this year. They beat the Cardinals 3-2 last night, so Coach Ball has to wonder which George Mason team he's going to see here tonight. That's, a, that's true. That's uh, exactly the same with IPFW, though, you know. Uh, uh, they're in the same situation. They go to California, play well, or play well the first match, and then after that, it's kind of downhill. So which two teams are going to show up tonight? Uh, tonight, IPFW, uh, totally new personnel. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah, Coach Ball's making two roster changes. Number one, Andy Heffron. Number 13, Tim Heffron, starting tonight in place of uh, setter Phil Bodine and uh, freshman Tony Looney. Andy Heffron back to serve for the Volley Dogs. Mm -hmm. I think we're just going to see some interesting things out of Tim Heffron. Oh, a nice tip. Fred Malcolm on the kill there on the overpass. And already, uh, George Mason, one of his weaknesses in the scouting report has been their passing and their sitting has been a little bit suspect this year. And that's already showing an evidence here tonight. Yeah, when I, when I heard that Acosta was setting, I, uh, I couldn't believe it. He's a strong hitter. They have him setting, though. Bob Rubino with the kill. There's almost another overpass there, and Acosta was able to pull it back for the Patriots. That's a nice talent to have to save that overpass. Yeah. Dag Erlison again with another kill, and that ties the game at one apiece. Rubino serving again for the Patriots. Heffron set in the middle to Malcolmson. Ooh. Overpass on the volley, Don. Jay Goldstein oh, that's the kill. nice dig. Oh, you got to hate that. Make an incredible dig, and one of your own teammates is in the net. Yeah, they called Acosta's in the net as he turned to pick up the pass. His shoulder touched the net, and it was a violation. Fred Malcolm back to serve for the volley, Dons. Nice Heffron. play by Andy. Ball's going to be blocked out of bounds. Fred Malcolm on the kill. IPFW takes a two-to-one lead in this first ma first game of this five-game match. Jim, I, I tell you, that's got to be the best shot in the game of volleyball. There's no chance for defense to play that ball. And Malcolm nets it into the net for his serving there. That's a problem that's been uh, plaguing the volley dons all year. Their serving has, has not been very consistent. Old steam with nice an offset by Jay. Goldstein again. Good call. Oh. Good call by Dan. Chris Gunwall with the tip, but his foot was underneath the net. It's another violation on George Mason. Be side out to the volley dodge. Tim Heffron back to serve. How's Heffron's setting been so far, Lauren? He been able to pick up on that yet, or is it a little too early? Oh, no, it looks really good right now. He's getting to the ball. He's getting, setting it off his forehead. He's doing a real nice job. We got Springov and Goldstein on the block. It's point for the Volley Dons. IPFW takes a 3-1 lead in this first game. I have to think right now that IPFW is going to be fired up. They had a good practice last night, and uh, they're ready to go. Nice shot there. Man. Chris Gunwald come up. What do they call that, Lauren? They looked like they were going to the first guy and the second guy come up and hit the ball. Well, that's a cross set. It's just the, the middle blocker, middle hitter. He goes up for a one ball, as we call it. There's Jay Goldstein on the kill there. It'll be side out to IPFW. Goldstein will be serving. And the setter would uh, end up setting the second option. So he has two choices on that yeah, particular play. Yeah. Nice serve by Goldstein. Nice hustle by, by number 19, Chris Grunwald. Ned violation. Oh, the referee reverses himself. He's side out to George Mason. 
Heffron's height may have hurt him a little bit there on that play. He wasn't quite able to get up to the ball. True, true. I tell you, I was just over in Italy, and our setter was probably the same height as 10, and blocking was not much of a factor. Keith Niergar with the kill, side out IPFW. IPFW maintains its 3-1 lead here in the first game. Yeah, serving violation on Dan Spring. That's IPFW's second one of the game. It'll be side out to George Mason. Ralph Surplavita serving. Jay Goldstein with a nice play off the block. Shot goes long on Andy Heffron's oh, attack. Good point for George Mason. Andy's got a nice line shot. If he keeps on swinging, he's going to get it. Their guard with the tip, and it's good enough for a side out. So Heffron, you know, Andy's not very big either, but he's got tremendous jumping ability. Yeah, he sure does. I believe it's up somewhere around 37, 38 inches. Nice play by Mason. That's what you got to do, stay in the ball game. Pretty side out. IPFW maintains a 3-2 advantage here in the first game. Acosta back to serve. There's a Jay Goldstein's an All-American for IPFW. Acosta's George Mason's equivalent. There's a nice shot by Andy. Though. Tim Heffron setting his brother Andy, and it's down for a side out. Andy holds Heffron back serving for the Volley Dons. Dag Erlinson. You're right about Mason having a little problem receiving tonight. Thus far, they're not getting it up to Acosta where he can run offense. Does IPFW have a little bit of problems on the block, or is, is the serving just you know, passing around our blockers? Well, the block essentially is probably the lowest percentage play in volleyball. If you do have a good block, that's all the better for you. But the offense is getting so strong nowadays that uh, and that just makes you look like you have a bad block. And that's a third serving violation on IPFW. He sought out to George Mason. So you really have to count your back row players for the dig. Oh, definitely. Tim Heffron, we well, just talked oh. about he doesn't get up that well. Has a nice block on that he play. He got up that time, did it? An overpass, and Heffron turned it into a side out for IPFW. He'll be back serving. It's going to make Mason think a little bit about hitting over the little guy. Nice shot. Nice shot by Spivola. Andy Heffern got his hands on him. He couldn't quite get the ball to come up. How fast that ball going, Lauren? It comes over the net. Oh, I would believe it's close to 100 miles an hour. Some of the stronger hitters are hitting even harder. Keith Niergar finds an opening. Side out IPFW. We're not getting much scoring in this game so far, but we're getting some real good the playing action. Goldstein serving. Spavola had a little trouble receiving tonight. There's a cost that goes from wow. the setting to hitting. And side out George Mason. Looks like George Mason right switch off from like a 5-1 offense where there's one setter then back to a 6-2 offense where there are two setters. It's going to be a uh, a little problem for IPFW. The blockers have to pick up on that. Nice play by Tim Heffron, but the official called it rolled across his body, which you can't do that unless you're playing volleyball with us at lunchtime sometimes. We, we let those things go. That's true. I've seen that. Swobe serving. Goldstein, it's no, long. No touch. No touch, no touch. Nice set by Timmy Heffron. Yeah, George Mason takes a 4-3 advantage in the first game. There we get a picture of the IPFW Mastodon mascot. That's long. And make George Mason have a little trouble with their serves tonight. IPFW 11 and 10 on the year. George Mason 18 and 7. Oh, nice dig. Beautiful play by Tim Heffron. His brother Andy there oh, on the Costa with the return. 
That's what wins ball games. Nice. He, here we go. He had to reach for that ball. That was what you talked about earlier, the crossover set. And Dugar almost had to go up over a player to get to that one. It was a nice play on It's Keith's an effective part. play. It's very crucial to win a rally like that. It gives you the momentum and the confidence to keep going. Number four, that's his fourth serving here for IPFW. Keep harping on that, but that's game 4-4 four, four in the first match here, and the first game of the match. That just breaks the momentum for IPFW a little bit. Let's see if we can get it back. Yeah. Well, the carry on that play, nice tip by Malkin. Now, George Mason just got Coach Wayne Staley, his 400th win last night, and he's been at the school since 1975. He's had some real good players in his time. For example, Moyo Kasim, 6'6 Nigerian. Point shot is wide by Costas. They'll get volley down to point. They take a 5-4 lead. And he's much like Arnie Ball. He started the program from scratch out, you know, George Mason. Arnie did the yeah. same thing here about nine years ago. He sure did. He's a real nice fellow. So. Costa with the side out off the block. Dan Springoff had a chance at it, but off the block, the ball curved away from him. He wasn't able to get to it. Costa serving. IPFW is passing really well tonight. Goldstein nice. opted for the tip instead of the uh, you know, stronger attack, and they block it right back down. Well, you got to take that sometimes. Eh? You think you got the tip, and all of a sudden some big hand jumps in your face. So harder's not always better. That's true. You definitely have to mix up your shots. If you uh, decide you want to hit cross court all the time, the block's going to adjust, you're going to be in trouble. So you got to mix up shots. It's a jump serve from Acosta. Efron connection didn't quite go that time. Andy was a little late getting there in a set. I'm not sure that he was expecting the ball in the first place. Yeah, I don't think he was. Costa serves out. As of right now, Mason's not playing much better. It's just IPFW making a few mistakes. Here. George Mason leads this first game six to five. Andy Heffron serving for the volley downs. Second option. It's good. Pick number 16, Dag Erlinson, to kill off the block. Neither team's been able to get much momentum going. That's true. It's basically been a side out game thus far. It's a sweet set. Oh, oh. nice. Beautiful, big. beautiful. That, those plays right there, Jim, that's what wins ball games. Yeah, Ralph Septon Vita with a nice dig for George Mason. They take a 7-5 lead, and that may get them going a little bit. Both yeah. teams have been a little stagnant. That sure will. A play like that will get any team going, I think. Somebody's been able to put a run together so far. Oh, I think we had four and five and six and seven hits there. Fred Malcolm getting the ball back from the volley dodge. We trail in this match five to seven. We're in the first game here at the IPFW Athletic Center. Jim Coffin and Lauren Cheever bring you the action tonight. Nice block, nice. Jay Goldstein. Again, there's that short blocker on the outside. No factor, no, uh, no problem. Tim Heffron, Jay Goldstein with a nice block. Nice play by Danny Springer. Uh, Free nice ball for play. George Mason. That time it hurt him us a little bit, but. With a jump serve from George Mason, and it's good. It's an effective jump serve. Dag Erlinson, he just sent it right down the line. George Mason leading eight to six. And another one. Nice pass by Freddie. Goldstein's long on the shot. Point for George Mason, take a nine six advantage. Mason's getting a little momentum here. What's the percentage on these jump serves, sir? Well, it depends. Actually, you know, if you're a good jump server, percentage is going to be around. Eight out of ten times, which is which is good. It's Dan Spring out with the kill side out for IPFW. So the effectiveness of the serve kind of 
counter ways the fact you may not get it in you know, quite as often. True. Jump serve can be one of the easiest passes, or one of the easiest serves to pass if it's right to someone. If it's to their right or left, then it's, they're going to have a little problem passing. George Mason with the side out. The Patriots seem to have a little, a little bit of the momentum going their way. Dan Springer, well, Heffron's assist. Heffron connection. Andy Heffron with a nice pass. Tim Heffron, nice set. George Mason wants to wipe the floor up a little bit. That's what Ohio State used to do when you, when you were playing, Lauren, every time they'd get behind a little bit. Oh, definitely. Ohio State's got a lot of a lot of tricks in their book, and uh, yellow cards is one of them. Nice shot again. Nice shot. Septim Vita. Number 13's having a nice game. You could keep him in this ball Mike game. Mike Swobe serving. Mason, George Mason leads 9-6. Net violation on Tim Heffron. 10-6 ball game. It's hard to pass tight with Tim. Seeing as his height, uh, you got to keep it off the net a little bit so he can jump set. You get a little tight, his height's going to hurt him. George Mason's evening things up a little bit here on the uh, serving errors category. They've got three, Volley Dons have four. Spring out with the serve for IPFW. Overpass. Nice play, nice play. Nice play by Mason. Long, long. No, no, no touch. touch, no point, touch. Point for IPFW. Now Keith Niergaard on the set there for IPFW earlier. Keith's done a little bit of setting. There's Coach Arnie Ball throwing a little bit of a tantrum there. Didn't quite like what he saw. Try to get his team going. They've been a little bit stagnant here tonight. There's Acosta with the wide open field. Side out George Mason. They lead 10-7. You're going to see Arnie throw quite a few tantrums. Just because he's just so much behind this team, and they, he wants them to do as best as they can. Well, I asked him in our interview earlier but whether you know, the team has progressed as quickly or as far as he thought they should be at this point. He thought early in the year that they were, you know, pretty well along, and lately it hasn't been you know, quite up to what his expectations. True. You see, I, do you see that often, Andy Heffron with the pass and then with the attack? That's a. Uh, that's coming to the game probably uh, two years ago. Na USA national team, they have Karch Karai who can pass extraordinaire and then is one of their best attackers. So why not put the two together and, and go from there? Set was a little tight, but Erlinson was able to get to it and it's side out George Mason's. Game one still dead like 10-7. Andy Heffron having a night, nice night passing tonight. Wasn't quite able to get back that. Heffron with the attack and was blocked back over and is right in front of him, but his momentum was carrying him backwards. Couldn't quite reach out and get that ball to a teammate. Well, we might mention this game's being brought to you on cable channel 23 and cable channel 10. Nice dump by Tim Heffron. Tim's a very good, uh, as we say, dumper or tipper. Very deceiving when you keep both hands up when you're setting. Tip with one. It's, it's a great shot. And what, what basically what they're doing? They're not blocking Tim. They you know don't expect yeah. him to hit the ball, so they're not blocking. Yeah, they're just basically they're ignoring him right now because of his height and uh, and inexperience on the floor. So they're going to ignore him and just uh, key on Jay Goldstein and uh, go from there. Okay, Lord, nice. What do we have there? We had Jake going all the way across the floor to hit the ball. All the way across. Tim Heffron right now, the setter, is front row, right front. Jay passed the ball from uh, left back and what we call a cross, cross country set. Took off one foot and got a kill. It's a nice play. Point for the volley dodge. And Carey was called on George Mason. Score 11 8 here. Fred Malcolm serving for IPFW. Poor receiving. Hurt him again. Acosta, again, his jumping ability allowed him to get to that ball. A lot of people wouldn't have been able to, but. It's true. He's just a strong athlete. He's going to get to most balls a lot of people won't get to. And IPFW is drawn within two, trailing 11-9 here. The first game of this three best three out of five match. 
Nice Goldston. block. Nice block by Jay. Good coverage, though, by Mason. Yeah, Dag Erlinson coming over to the right corner and hitting it cross court, kind of against the grain of the uh, defense. Seeing some nice things out of IPFW. Dan Spring, a little out of position. The set was he tried to hit that one left handed, just about a foot long. Dan's got to keep that ball in play. 12 9, George Mason. There's the jump serve again. Overpass. You notice that Acosta blocked that ball standing on the ground. Just turn his hands up and let the ball deflect up in the air. Referee Tom Pingle. Somebody in the net for George Mason. It's going to be side out IPFW. I believe, he's, I believe he's calling a back row attack on Acosta. He did not jump, but he still blocked the ball. Tim Heffron serving for the Volley Dons. Jay nice Goldstein with the block and the hit. Nice tip. Well, we might mention, Lauren, on that play, since Jay blocked it, that does not count as a hit, and he can pass it again, right? That's true, Jim. Yeah, the block does not count as a hit. You can block the ball. After that, you still have your three hits, which is really nice. There's that second option play. This time did not fool IPFW. Near Gunner and Goldstein on the block. And IPFW is pulled within one. George Mason leads 12-11. Got the momentum going. And Wayne Stalick and the Patriots want to talk it over a little bit. Lauren, you, you mentioned earlier just returned from Italy. I might tell you know, folks what you were doing over there. Well, I was playing an A1 division professional volleyball in a little city called Maldonado, Italy. Uh, it was a fantastic ex experience for me uh, because it was just a spur of the moment thing. Christmas time, they give me a call. I'm out of here. I'd, anything I can do to promote IPFW and volleyball, I'm going to do. What was the level of play over there? Can you compare it to anything that people over here might have an idea? Is it as good as you know, what we're seeing tonight? Is it a notch above that? Is it as good as the national team? Uh, well, I have to say, Jim, not uh, offending anybody here, but the game is much higher than what we're seeing tonight. Uh, A1 division is. Uh, definitely better than the collegiate level here in the United States. Uh, the top teams over there will definitely give our national team a run for the money. Mike Schwab on the kill for the Patriots, side out George Mason. Chris Gunwall serving. I'm not saying there are players over here that can't compete over there, but I tell you, they just, the teams over there, they practice two times a day and it's their life. Jay Goldstein at the side out for IPFW. He'll be serving for the Volley Dons. George Mason still leads 12-11. Underhand serve. Try to catch him off guard. That's a little bit different. I haven't seen that. They did catch him off guard. Even though they were able to return the initial serve. And that, this game's all tied up 12-12. Mason having a little problem with that pass. Fred Malcolm with a nice ball control play. Fred is a big asset to IPFW coming in, 6'5 freshman. Dan uh, Spring on with the kill. You might mention earlier, Keith Newgarden made a real good play. Heffron kind of missed, served, and the ball didn't get up even to the height of the net. And Keith was quick enough to get there and get into the ball and get it over. And, uh, Definitely, like, it's a low set. You got to keep those balls in play. You can't just blast that one into the net. Uh, Keith did a nice job keeping the ball in play on the other side of the net. IPFW is able to get a point off of it. Takes a 13-12 lead. Jay Goldstein serving for IPFW. We're in the first game here tonight at the IPFW Athletic Center. You got an exciting first game going. Jay just continues to mix those serves up. They don't know what's coming. That's nice to see that mix up on the serve. It's just like you're attacking. It's going to take your passer off, off guard. And Free ball for the volley dive. See what they can do with it. Andy Heffron tips Mixing the back up. row. There's Acosta. He's probably about four feet away from the net. 
and he's almost able to head straight down. It just shows his tremendous jumping ability. That's true. That last play we saw before that with Andy Heffron tipping the ball, there's a time when you want to tip and a time when you want to swing, and I believe right now we don't want to see any tips out of IPF Beverly. We'd like to see shots like that. We want to see exactly like that out of Andy Heffron. Andy's come a long way. He's really worked hard this summer. He's worked hard this year. It's nice to see him playing like he is. Dan Spring off serving for the Volley Dons. Good pass out of Mason. Acosta again. Just keep swinging. That's what you want to see at this point in time, 13-12. You just want to see some swinging going on. And IPFW wants to wipe down the court a little bit. Slow up the pace a little bit. And that's something IPFW kind of faces. Arnie was, said it was really glaring out in California when our 6-1 uh, guys were going against the 6-5, six, 6-6 six, six guys that you know, they had to play against. We've got Jay Goldstein, 6-4, Fred Malcolm, 6-5, and that's really the you know, amount of height we've got. That's true. So, when you get, get up that higher level out west, you're just going to have to tool the block a lot. Keith nice Nierkogger shot. with a nice tip to the back row. Nice play, Tim Heffron. You notice Keith Niergardner setting the one ball. He is a setter, so he'll, he'll do that. So, if that position, is Jay too far back on that, or is that? That just, from this angle, it's hard to see. There could be a hole in the block, and when there's a hole in the block, that's a hard, hard to defend. Jay's in a good position. He's right where he should be. IPFW well, looking a little sluggish now. 13-13 match. Well, Coach Arnie Ball wants to talk it over. George Mason takes a 14-13 lead. You They're just, one point away from winning this first game. You just can't get timid at this point, and we saw we had a bad pass. Keith Niergaard rolling the ball over the block. Easy pass up to Mason Setter. Then they get a side out. Just a little tentative there? A little tentative, yeah. What's Arnie probably telling the team? Anything particular or is just... Well, he's got to tell them to push hard right now. Uh, he's just... They, they got to go out there with, with everything they got. We got a slow motion replay here. That's the, this is a, this is the, the one ball. It's a quick attack. Number, I believe that's 14. He's There's going up. Cost the on the outside. Yeah. Okay, we're back to live action here. George Mason serving for the first game. He's got a touch. No, no touch. touch. No touch. IPFW. Can't do that at that crucial time in the game. Mason showing the strength they do have, sticking with it, not letting them have any edge on this first game. Is Marty going to make any big changes here, or is this game close enough that basically we can just stay status quo and may try to push a little harder? Arnie could definitely stay with what he had out there on the floor the first game. I, I just saw a few mistakes, a little breakdown, but overall, Nice play by out all the players. We got, like Mike mentioned, that this game's being brought to you on ch cable channels 23 and cable channels 10 here in Fort Wayne. We've got an overhead view of the IPFW Athletic Center. Nice shot there. The bench areas. There's the score. George Lason leading one game to nothing. We've got a, basically a two-minute intermission in between games here. And Phil Bodine, Tony Ludwig warming up, which is nice to see. Shows they want to play. Do you have any idea when Arnie might get them back into the game? Is that, you know? That, that's just a go-with-the-flow type of thing. Uh, players playing bad, take one out, put one in. Right now, I don't see where anybody's playing bad enough where they should come out of the game. That's, you know, a luxury he had, didn't have last year. He's basically down to almost eight, nine players by the end of the season with some injuries and whatnot. True. And, uh, you know, this year he does have a little bit of a depth. We might talk about one player that he does not have tonight, and that's um, uh, Bobby Kramer. Uh, Bobby Kramer. Uh, Bobby has come a long way. He broke his hand. And uh, right now he's out of the action. We got a slow motion replay of the IPFW Mastodon. Oh, here's the slow motion. Here's the slow motion. 
Marquez, pass, Costa the center. Here comes Acosta, he sets. High ball outside. With a fake to the middle. Nice strong approach by Mason. Nice block by IPFW there. Yeah, Goldstein came from the middle to block that. And you can see Tim Heffron. Had to get outside and notice that Jay Goldstein blocked that ball with his left hand. So all balls are not blocked with both hands. You might mention that Kramer broke his left thumb and he's expected to be back in action about a week and a half but before his injury he was hitting at a 41% uh, ratio and that's almost phenomenal. That's you know four out of 10 shots he took were good for a kill, either a point or a side out. He yeah. also was second on the team in uh, kills and digs. So uh, they played pretty well without him but uh, if they could add him to the lineup, they should not, be a little better. Not only those stats look good but on the court Bob is a an incentive, a motivator, and uh, he just fires, people's, fires people up when he's out there. He's got a lot out of his potential, and uh, I like to see Bob playing that way. Dag Erlison with the tip. Good for a point for George Mason. They're taking early 1-0 lead here. Acosta back to serve. Nice pass by Fred Malcolm. Oh! Acosta with a nice dig, but... Patriots unable to handle it. Side out to IPFW. Dan Spring observing for the Volley Dons. This is almost a must win game, isn't it, Warren? That's true. This is. It's hard to be down 2 0 and come back even when you are playing at home. That's very true. That's very true. You lose the first one, that's kind of an upsetter. But, it, but if you come back and win the next, next three, it just shows how much guts your team really has. And I believe IPFW can do it tonight. Keith Niergaard with the point for the Volley Dons. We're tied one all. Overpass again. Andy Heffron with the kill. You got to like that. When you're up there blocking, you see that ball coming over. You just, you just start drooling. But they're really having problems with their passes, aren't they? They sure are. Too many overpasses. Too many balls not even making it to the setter. Serves wide. Side out to the Patriots, number 17, Bob Rubino serving. IPFW has a 2-1 advantage here. We're in the second game. George Mason took the first contest 15-13. Andy Heffron passing really nice tonight. Go back to Malcolm. If the first don't succeed, try again. That's really good, Jim, to see that when you... Tim, he's in there, he's set in that middle, he set it two times in a row, that really gets that middle blocker confused. And as soon as you kick that ball outside, then it's one on one, it's anybody's game. Then. Keith Niergaard is certain for the volley dimes. Oh. Nice dig, across. Tough shot, tough shot, off the block. Blocked out of bounds, side out George Mason. I think you're gonna see Mason's gonna start hitting down the line a little bit more, and take advantage of that short blocker, Tim Heffron. Well, we might mention the people, the reason some of these games take so long, you have to serve in order to score a point. That uh, if you get a kill off when you're on defense and not serving, it's just a side out and you get a chance to serve and get the point. You want an inter interesting story behind that, Jim? They were thinking about going to a 21 game point, scoring off every serve, every side out. You get a point every time. They thought that the games were getting too long and TV TV stations couldn't cover them all. But uh, luckily they did not. Great rally going here. Both teams keeping the ball alive. Nice defense. That's what wins. It's a good rally here. Neither team wants to quit. Oh. Net violation on IPFW. Fred well, that has to hurt. Neither team was going to let that ball hit the ground. And IPFW gets called for net violation. George Mason leads three to two. That's a little inexperienced play by the freshman Fred. That's going to come with time. Andy Heffron, a little quicker, pulling the gun there, hits him the bottom of the net. George Mason leads four to two. George Mason's a very good team, but very beatable tonight. IPFW's got to make him beat him. Jay Goldstein. Shot to the back row. Proving why Jay is an All-American. Attack out of the back row. Jay is very good out of the back row. They're using Jay less tonight they have in uh, recent games. 
Tim's doing a real good job of mixing the ball up. So George That's Mason doesn't really know who's going to hit it. Very important. Nice block by Fred Malcolm. He was all over that ball. And IPFW pulls to within one. George Mason leading 4-3. Nice shot by number 19, Chris Grunwald. Side out to the Patriots. You mentioned earlier, Jim, that they're not using Jay as much as recent nights, which is very good. You keep setting Jay over and over, he's going to have two blockers, three blockers on him. It's rather hard to hit around a two and three man block. He's able to that time get around two of them as he gets a side out off the block. Fred Malcolm serving for IPFW. Costa set wasn't quite there and it wasn't there. Not much you could do with the ball. As we talked earlier, that kind of a set, you got to keep in play. You just can't blast in the bottom of the net. IPFW is tied this match in this game at four apiece. Mason. Tim Heffron almost had him. Let's give me some glasses. I thought he did have it. I had the ball on the wrong side of the net there. So Tim just got to penetrate a little bit, and that's it's going to be on the other side. I thought he had shut down the All-American, but the ball did slip through. Here we find Jay Goldstein unable to hit past two blockers, and George Mason takes a 5-4 advantage here in the second game. Had a nice block on Mason. Again, the second option coming from the reverse side this time. Jay coming from outside and not weak side. That time. And he hit it back the same direction he came. That's a little unusual, isn't it? Don't you expect him straight down the middle or off to the right? Well, blockers are looking for Jay. His momentum is carrying him to the right side. And when you cut that back, there's no blocker there. Another serving error for the Volley Dons. George Mason leads 5 4 here. We're in the second game. The Patriots took the first game 15 13. Playing best three out of five. Goldstein with a side out for IPFW. We're definitely seeing some nice setting from Tim Heffron tonight, Jim. The Bear Wolf, as they call him, from Minnesota. Whoops. Nice play. Keith Neergarner with an incredible shot there. Setting abilities helped him on that one. It's almost an overpass back to another overpass. And we're not at five apiece. Again, problem with that passing. Andy Heffron with the kill. IPFW leads 6-5, and George Mason wants to talk it over a little bit. So the scouting report we've had on George Mason has been pretty accurate. We've got trouble passing, and they've got trouble setting, unless Rivaldo Acosta is doing the setting, and they need him to hit a little more than set. Well, that's true. That's true. Uh, it's no good to put Acosta in there to set when the passing's not there. Uh, doesn't matter how good of a setter you have when the passing's not there. And uh, Mason is not passing uh, like they should be. You've got an All-American hitter. You really don't want him setting or, you know, any more than he has to. Uh, George Mason started out with two setters this year. And uh, they're, you know, trying their third guy to go tonight. comes the Patriots back out, out of the timeout. I believe uh, Wayne Stalek, he's trying to make Acosta into a setter because Acosta is a fantastic athlete. Uh, in his earlier years, he had a setter like Rick Lucas, who was the number one setter out east and the Midwest, and possibly the West. Whoops. Can't mis quite see what happened there. If he <laughs> a little miscommunication. A horizontal there. set instead of a vertical one. IPFW leads 7-5. We're in the second game. Sorry, nice side out by Mason. Finally got that one right. Chris Gunwall, the 6-2 freshman from Germantown, New York, now doing the setting for George Mason. And they trail IPFW. They're down 7-5. There's a jump serve by Mason. Overpass, but nice dig by Andy Heffron. Costa, nice defensive play. 
probably more net calls tonight than yep. both teams playing real good defense, but IPF, IPFW's been plagued by several net violations. That's just that greediness to get that ball. Get a little help there from Acosta as he jumps or falls at the bottom of the net. Serving for IPFW will be Dan Spring of IPFW leading 7-6. Tight set. When George Mason called for the net violation. Number 19, Chris Glenwell. It was hard to see from this angle. Looked like he had some violation there. I guess the officials are going to talk it over. I believe the ball hit the antenna, but uh, I'm not a ref, so. Either way, it's IPFW's ball. So. That's true. Dan Springer will be serving for the Volley Dons once play resumes. Lord, we might mention at this time, next Tuesday night, IPFW will be headed down to Ball State to play the Cardinals. That's always a tough rivalry. And uh, Farm Bureau Insurance and Joe Hanna are sponsoring a bus to the for the trip. Anyone interested in going along, cost is $10, and uh, refreshments will be provided on the bus as well as admission to the ball game. And uh, anybody interested, call 481-6643. And uh, we can get, some, get you some information on the IPFW bus trip to Ball State. That's always a good game to watch. It's two rivals right there in the Midwest. Spring Ob gets his hand on the ball, but it goes spraying out of bounds. Side out to George Mason. Nice pass. Fred Malcolm. A little noise out of Fred there. Keith Niergaard serving for the Volley Dons. They lead seven to six. Hole in the block. Fred Malcolm just didn't make it out to Tim that time. And again, Acosta did the setting for George Mason. So is that what they call that, 6-2 or a 5-2 or? 6-2, that's where you have two setters and six hitters. I don't mean that to sound like there are eight people on the court, but the setters are also eligible to hit. You have one setter in the back row, one in the front row. Heffron tried to tip the ball on over, but George Mason was there and ready for the play. This game's tied at 7-7. With Dag Erlinson serving. There's a jump serve. No problem by Andy Heffron this time. Nice play by nice. Tim there. Dan, Dan Spring on back row. Nice play by Mason. And again, off the net, the ball trickles down between the two blockers. Point for the Patriots. They lead 8-7 in the second game here at the IPFW Athletic Center, IPFW and George Mason University. Tim's got to get Fred that ball. Fred is a little bit taller than most players on IPFW. He's got to set it a little bit higher. And IPFW led 7-5 at one point. They find themselves down 9-7. Erlingson still serving for the Patriots. Took a little off that one. Nice play by Andy Heffron. Jay Goldstein hits it out of bounds, but Andy Heffron with two great plays. Doug, the first one went over an overpass, and George Mason returned it, but he's able to kick up the next one to the teammate, but uh, was unsuccessful. George Mason leading 10-7 for the second game. George Mason won the first game 15-13. Got a little slow motion play here. Fred Malcolm with a nice one ball set from Tim Heffron. As you can see, he just hit that ball in what we call the power position. He's right-handed, so the ball's going to go to the right position on the court. Look at the George Mason bench. You look at the IPFW bench. So what, what, why do the players stand up at the end of the bench, Lauren? Is there any special reason for that? Or? Oh, they can keep warm. They sit down, they get a little bit cold. If they stand up, move around. Shows the coach that uh, they want to play a little bit. They're ready to go in. They're not just sitting there enjoying the match. 
Another dead violation on IPFW. George Mason leads 11-7 here in the second game. Wipe up a little sweat off the floor. IPFW's got a little bit to lose in this game. They've got a seven game home winning streak going. And Arnie Baldas would not like to see that broken here. That's true, it's always nice to keep a run going. Might mention they'll be at home again Saturday night, March 19th, when they host Graceland College. Game time, 7.30. Graceland's a Midwestern Air Collegiate Volleyball Association opponent, so Coach Ball's hoping for another conference win there. Nice defensive play by Mason. A little help from the net. See what IPF you can do with this. Not a good set by Tim. If Malcolm was able to keep it in the play. Jim, that play right there where Jay passed up Tim, that's got to be a point. That's an easy ball. They got to make a point out of it. They didn't. Mason took advantage of it, so they scored. And they're up 12-7 right now. IPFW trying to slow things down, wiping up the floor, trying to break the momentum. This game has you know, such a game of momentum. About you're watching the game on cable channels 23 and cable channel 10 here in Fort Wayne. George Mason, the serving air, back to the Volleydons, and they need to get something going right now. Andy Heffron serving. And he's serving the long out of bounds. Jay Golsey, nice pass. Again, there's that cross country move. Tim back to him. Golsey, nice one fly, no touch. Little problem finding the court there. George Mason leads 13 to seven here in the second game. They've already won game one. That's a good call by uh, referee Tom Pingle. He brought that from behind his head nice and, just, and just threw it. Now uh, he might be able to play for the IPFW basketball team. Well, that was close. I couldn't tell from up here, but Tom Pringle with his net, hand on the net could tell if that hit. That was tough for me to see, too. Fred Malcolm back to serve. That's a nice play by Mason. That middle blocker goes for what we call a 31 to fake out that middle blocker than the second option hitter. It's just a little bit higher than that. George Mason serving here for the second game. Jay Goldstein says not yet. Side out to the volley dodge, trailing 14 to seven. Tim Heffron will be serving. You're gonna see a lot of balls go to Jay when it gets, gets this close. Need him for a side out. George Mason knows that, so they're going to be camping on him. Nice block. That's a good block. Spring up and Goldstein, point for the volley dog. Gets the crowd into it here a little bit. As you said earlier, Costa is uh, equivalent to Jay Goldstein, so you're going to see balls go to him when they get to 14. They need a side out, so that ball will possibly be set high outside to Costa right here. You called that one. Side out to George Mason. That's why he's an All-American. They need a side out. Give it to Acosta. How's our back row play been tonight? Has it been fair? Or? Well, we could see a lot more defensive plays. We're not seeing a lot of ball control up to Tim. But overall, it's not bad. We need to see some more, though, if we want to win. Valadon's got a little bit lucky there. Just a couple of tips around the net, and luckily it fell. Uh, George Mason was... Especially Acosta was there close, and he could have put the ball down for a winning point here in game two. Coach Arnie Ball wants to make a substitution, bringing in freshman Tony Looney into the lineup. Tony's worked hard all, all season. Let's hope we see some nice things out of him tonight. Block again. Block. Ball's out. Lines people, no, no touch. 14-9, IPFW trying to creep back into this one. Nice serve nice by Goldstein. Serve, having problem. And again. A little breakdown by George Mason. 
And they want to talk it over. Brings the score right up to respectability there, 14-10. Look at the IPFW bench. Fred Malcolm there. Slow mo action. That's a nice pass. Nice, nice form by our setter. Fred up there. Like I said earlier, Tim's got to get that up there to Fred where he can swing. You get it by a shoulder, all he can do is tip. Here. So we'll see if he, what he can do here. He gets it over. Nice in there. Nice play by Tim Heffron. This is a point. It's got to be a point. Oh, Defensive nice play. play. Again, again, we have to have a point out of these people. And it is. And the volley down. They will keep the ball alive. Pull within 14-11. What's Arnie doing here? He's making a substitution. He's making a little substitute. He wants a little defense right now, and Paul Springov is a good defensive player. The second set of brothers on this team, Paul and Dan Springov. Springov for Springov. Sport, Shoreview, I'm not sure. That's not sport. It's, get these towns right. Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin. They'll be on the block. Nice Efron. play by Tim. Nice set. Nice tip. Three good plays. Oh, we're seeing incredible defense by IPFW. George Mason says not to be outdone. There's going to be some trouble. Paul, that's why he's back there. That's why Arnie put him in there. Tony Rooney. Tony Rooney. Tony Springhoff's in here. That's Tony, Tony Springhoff. Tony Looney with the kill there. Uh, we like to think they're all Springhoffs. To make plays like Paul did in the back row there, we, we'd welcome that. IPFW down 14-12, trying to crawl back in this one. Down by as many as seven here. Again, Mason having trouble with that pass. It's gonna hurt him, that's why Paul's in there. He's making those plays. Nice hustle. Tim Stefan came from the back row to get there and set the ball for Malcolm. 14-13, IPFW closing quick. Paul Springhoff serving for the Volley Dons. At this moment in time, IPFW has to look across that net and look into the eyes of Mason and see defeat. Mason's really down right now. They got to see that. Look across that net and just take it to him. George Mason's made a couple of good plays, but IPFW's been able to come up with even a better one and get the points these last two times. So it's a little disheartening when you play that good a defense. That ball's hit out. And we're at two. It's 14-14. We might mention you have to win by two. So the volley down two points away from the victory right here. Nice shot of the crowd. About 500 on hand here for the night's match. And Coach Stalick making a change for George Mason. Number 12, David Hurst making his first appearance in the ballgame. Spring up serving for the volley downs. Nice serve, tough serve. It's got to keep pressure on Mason. A nice dig nice. by Jay Goldstein. It's a nice dig, just dug it up a little bit too far over the net. And a side out for George Mason. Nice, nice pass by Jay. There he goes, comes right back. That's what you have to do. Maybe the next game we ought to give George Mason 13 points and us about six and just start from there. The last, yeah. last two games, the team has really come alive as it's gotten down to the wire. I think we can only play when we get behind. Might as well do that. Nice, nice play, play by Tony. <laughs> IPFW leads 15-14. As we mentioned earlier, Jim, we were not getting a lot of action out of the back row. Now we're seeing a lot of action. Digs everywhere. This could be an important game. With George Mason beat Ball State last night, two games went an extra point, and George Mason won both of those 16-14. And I think that's probably you know, the difference in the game. So if IPFW can take this one, maybe it'll 
turn their way in game three. High ball, high ball. When he gets this point in time, you're not going to see a lot of quick attacks. Again, a cost of doing the setting, not the hitting. Mason not putting it together right now. Does that serve ill advice at this time since there's such a high chance of the I would say so. Out? Right now we, Mason just needs to keep that ball over the net. Nice play by Jay. Little miscommunication there between Tony Looning and Andy Heffron. Again, freshman, freshman in there make a little mistakes. Crucial times. No block. That's a sweet set by Tim Heffron. No blockers. All American Jay Goldstein with the side out. Fred Malcolm will be serving for the Volley Dodge, and Coach Ball makes a substitution, getting Dan springing on back in for Paul. Gives him a little bit of height on the front row. Keeping that ball over us. And that ball's out. And we've got a winner. That's game, no touch. IPFW takes game two, 16-14. And this match is tied at one game apiece. George Mason won the first match, first game, 15-13. See the teams switching sides. And here at the IPFW Athletic Center, IPFW trailed 14 to 7 in the second game. And they were able to come back, win this game 16 14. Nine unanswered points from the Volley Dons. Join me now alongside is Chris Seidel, the Assistant Sports Information Director here at IPFW. Chris, you handled most of the basketball you know, chores this winter. Tell us a little bit about the basketball team here. Well, Jim, I tell you, the men had an outstanding year. They uh, broke everybody's expectations, I think, this season. They end up 15-13 overall, which was the first winning season that they've had here at IPFW in three years. And they end up 8-8 eight and eight in the GLVC, which is most wins they've ever had, and fourth place in the conference. Uh, the eight wins were the most wins ever, as I said, in, in the GLVC. Uh, they started off the year in good fashion. They went, won the Grand Valley State Tournament, which was the first time the IPFW team had ever won a tournament on the road. And then they also finished second in the Mart Heinen Tournament in Quincy College over in Illinois around Christmas time. So uh, they did pretty well, Jim. She had quite a few individual performances that were exceptionally good this year. Yeah, they did. Uh, three of them, four of them, I guess, in particular. Uh, the lone senior on the team, Dick Ivey, he ended up as the second leading career scorer in IPFW history, as well as the second all-time leading rebounder. Uh, Dick ended up with uh, 1,076 points and added 802 rebounds. And also uh, Bruce Rowan, 6'3", junior. Six, also 6'3", junior Bruce Rowan who uh, scored the most single season points ever in IPFW history, 672 for a 24 point average. I, uh, Roland, he led the team and the conference in scoring and was voted to the All Great Lakes region and GLVC first team. You know, we're hoping he'll still make All-American. That hasn't been released yet, has it? Or? No, that's right. He made the All-Region team, so he's now up for uh, All-American honors. Well, they're ready to start the third game. And we said earlier, George Mason won game one, 15-13. IPFW came back to win the second game, 16-14. I'd like to thank Chris for joining us, give us a little bit of wrap up on the men's basketball team. He said had a very successful season. In fact, Coach Andy Piazza right now is up high on the road recruiting, looking for a couple of new additions to this next year's team. They'll lose only one player, Richard Ivey. And Jay Goldstein serving for the Volley Dons. Let's see if they can keep that momentum going this third game. Nice play, could be a point. Nice play, but that's Andy, Sp Andy Heffron came back on the overset. Nice play. 
Nice Seeing some defense there. tonight. And he just pulled the trigger a little too quickly on that one. Nice little rally, though. Tried to get a little bit too much on it. That's what you don't see an awful lot in uh, the game of volleyball, especially men's volleyball. You just see side out, side out. When you see a rally, it's a nice sight. Dag Erlinson with the point for George Mason. They take a 1-0 lead here in the third game. And that service. Coach Arnie Ball says thank you. And hopefully his team can get things turned around here. They played a little sluggish at the start of both the first and second game, and he'd like to get them off to a little quicker start this time around. Danny Spring on nice serve, aggressive serve. Nice block by the volley dogs. Nice dig, nice dig, Jay. That's trouble. Andy Hepron off the block. He ties the game at one apiece. You mentioned earlier, Jim, uh, is, it, is it practical for the, the hitter to mix up his shots? And you'll see right there that Andy Heffron did not swing with everything he had, took a little off of it. It's defense has a little trouble handling. Wiping up the floor a little bit. Dan Springop still serving for the Volley Dons. Beautiful serve by Dan Springoff. Slack of foot movement over there by George Mason. Wait for the ball to come to them instead of going and getting the ball. So the Volley Dons lead two to one here in the third game. Cost is getting very aggressive. He wants to take everything now. Oh, I think we have a net violation. And we do. Mike Schwab. Point for IPFW. Volley Dons lead three to one. And that was a nice call on for the Volley Dons. Otherwise, it's been side out for George Mason. That sure is. Mike Schwab, he's a senior from Mason. That should not happen. Six, seven, Schwab is. And the half run, he's got to like that, blocking a 6 7 middle hitter. Andy being around somewhere around uh, six foot. Side out to George Mason. I imagine Arnie Ball would like to bury this team right here. Try to, go to the back, yeah, try to go to the back wall, row, and the ball floated on him a little bit. He's got to keep the ball out in front of him. And he got that ball a little bit behind him. And it just decided to take off. Now he's hitting that. He's not coming straight on. He's, all, he's almost turned his body in midair, swinging at the That's ball. That's true. He's having a little problem. He's not jumping into the ball. It looks like he's jumping away. I know it's Jay's done. Everybody just quit on that ball. Dan Springer yeah. got it up in the air, and that ball was playable. And Fred Malcolm and Jay Goldstein just stood there and watched it. I don't know if they lost sight of the ball or what. That's not a pretty sight. That's not a pretty sight to see by Coach Ball. Fred Malcolm gets the side out for IPFW. George Mason leading four to three here in the third game. IPFW won the second game 16-14 and George Mason took the opener 15-13. IPFW, Valley, they got get something going here. They can't expect George Mason to lie down and die for him. Nice play by Jay. Here we go. Let's see what we do with it. Keith Niergaard out of the back row. Incredible play by Acosta. Again, proving why he is an All-American. Andy Hepron off the block. Didn't look like he had anywhere to go with that ball. That's an incredible shot. When you have nowhere to go, turn that ball. Hit it towards the antenna, off the block. There's no way the defense can play. It's just impossible. It's more likely if they do block it, they're going to block it out of bounds on your side, or it's going to go off their hands out of bounds on That's theirs. That's true. The Volley Dons have drawn to a tie here in game three, 4-4. Four, four. Taking turns wiping up the floor. Slow it down. IPFW has a chance here. Slow down the momentum. I might mention at this time that IPFW is hosting the national championship here May 6th and 7th. It'll be at Memorial Coliseum. Several ticket outlets have been set up in, I in Fort Wayne. We'll talk about that a little later. Keith Niergaard is serving. 
Oh, nice dig by Keith. Nobody there to set it. That's the problem. Chris Gordon went back to serve for George Mason. IPFW taking time wiping up. Anybody interested in getting tickets to the national championship? We might mention we sold over 7,200 seats already. That's out of a possible 20,000 seats for both evenings. So we're about one third sold out. Ticket order form outlets. And we'll get to that in just a second. Tim Heffron called for left as he tried to save the overpass. Once again, that tight pass is a problem for Tim because of his height. Passers have to recognize that it, Tim's in there. Keep the ball off the net a little bit. Yeah, free Thank gift, free gift from George Mason. Is they get a serving error? Andy related Heffron. Christmas present. Andy Heffron back to serve. He's played a tremendous ball game tonight. Ah. Uh, and the ball is getting a little sluggish right here. George Mason leads 5-4. Valadon's going to have to pick up the pace if they want to win this third game. They can't be satisfied with just taking the second game. Schwob serving. Short serve. But Heffron brothers connect. Sent goal go. to Goldstein. Hits it down the line for a side out. Andy did a nice job getting to that ball. He's just got to pass a little bit higher. Timmy sets a nice set outside, and Jay was a kill. Fred Malcolm will serve for IPFW. Might mention you get your ticket order forms at Scott's supermarkets, Fort Wayne National Bank, WAJI, or Fort Wayne News Sentinel at the uh, Customer Service Center in Fort Wayne, uh, Fort Wayne Newspapers in the Glenbrook Square. That's ticket order forms. Individual tickets will be assigned and passed out uh, April 4th. Costa nice on the play. kill on the attack. And that one never made it over the net. Fred Malcolm hits the top of the net. Side out George Mason. Lord, we're really excited about the national tournament. Over 7,200 seats sold already. Purdue hosted the women's tournament and only had 5,000 sold prior to the tournament. And we're still a month away. That's incredible. I think volleyball right now is very big in the Midwest. We're going to see a lot more than 7,200 at this tournament. We're expecting a sellout right now. All of the floor seats and the lower arena sides are already gone. So anybody interested in getting tickets need to do so quickly because better seats are almost gone. And George Mason mounting an attack, taking a 7-4 lead. BFW's played a little sluggish right now. They're not quite getting to the balls, getting good passes to Tim Heffron so he can make some good sets. If somebody's got a water bottle on them on the floor or what, they seem I to keep so. spilling it there. Well, when you start working very hard this time in the match, you're going to do a lot of sweating, and the floor gets really wet out there. It's very dangerous when you start sliding. Jay Goldstein with a nice pass. Nice play, Andy Heffron. Have a little tipping going on, Mason. Jay Goldstein says, I'm sorry, no tips around here, and puts one down. Yeah, Tim Heffron got a tip, went over the net, and uh, George Mason could have done the same thing to the Volley Dons, but they miss hit, the ball tipped back over, and Goldstein puts it away. Tim Heffron serving for IPFW. Didn't hit anything, it's still a play, it's up in the rafters. You'll see that often, Jay Goldstein blocks the ball back off of Costa's forehead, the ball goes out of bounds. That's an incredible block. That that play right there, Acosta's going to be a little bit uh, worried about his next shot. The shot of Goldstein right there, IPFW's All-American. You get blocked like that, and then uh, it makes you think Tim a little Heffron bit. Tim Heffron serving for IPFW. The Bear Wolf, Shoreview, Minnesota. Looks wide from up here, and that's what they say. There you see it, two shots in a row. Acosta blocked. And his next shot, he hits out of bounds. He's number if, eight. I believe uh, if they go back to him, you're going to either see a tip or a roll. Shots wide. Bounds. IPFW pulls to, to a 7-7 tie. 
And then, Lauren, in Pat, last two games, this is kind of where IPFW's quit. That's it's, true. Uh, it's, uh, you know, George Mace has taken big advantage. Luckily, IPFW was able to win the second game. Looks like they're on a pretty good roll right now. Let's hope they keep it going. If they quit right here, I think uh, we might see a lineup change. Here's a look at the George Mason bench. It's a little bit different this year. Before, the players would stay on the court, and the coach would come out to them. Now the pl players are sitting on the bench. We got a slow motion replay here. I think this is a Jay's block of Acosta. It's a, the second option. Acosta swings. Jay's all over it. Blocks it right back to Acosta. That's a very, very good Good ball. camera work there catching that play. So. Camera crew from Channel 10 out here tonight doing a good job. Bringing you the IPFW Volley Dons, host of this year's NCAA Men's Volleyball National Championship. Goldstein on the Another. block again. Defense wins and blocks big part. There's Jay Goldstein, number 12. IPFW leads 8-7. You know, I'd like to mention that when I played here two years ago, the coverage that uh, men's volleyball was getting then is not even comparable to what it's getting now. The television crew out here tonight doing a fantastic job. And the three network crews, both newspapers are here, so everybody's taking interest in what Coach Arnie Ball's been able to do with this volleyball program, men and women's. Side out to the Volley Dons. Jay Goldstein will be serving. Now, Jay has a jump serve also, but he hasn't used it tonight. Any special reason for that? Or? Well, he, Jay, I remember last year talking to Jay, and if he feels like jump serving, he feels it right, he'll jump serve. Uh, if he doesn't feel it, he's not going to do it. Now, the coaches call the serves which player to serve it to on the bench. Do they also call for his jump serve, or do they totally leave that up to him? That's up to Jay. If he feels like doing it, he's going to do it. Costa bottoms out to the net, side out, volley dons. So either team isn't able to mount much of an attack here in the last two or three volleys. It's true, it's been a lot of defense, a lot of mistakes. Now the team has stopped making some mistakes, this team is gonna win. And that wasn't a mistake by Mason, that was a nice side out. Mike no, Schwolb with Mike the kill. And number four, Ephraim. Lopez from Puerto Rico in the lineup for George Mason. They've got a little bit of an international team. A couple of California players, one from Sweden, two from Puerto Rico. Side out IPFW. You might mention, you know, Coach Arnie Ball is the only coach in the country to have two volleyball teams, both his men's and women's, ranked in the top 20 in one year. He'd like nothing better than have both of them go to the NCAA tournament. That'd definitely be a treat for Coach Arnie Ball. Oh, get a little bit of a break there. Hits the net and rolls over. Right here, this should be a point for IPFW. Oh. Everybody a little quit on that play. After it was blocked, everybody said, he's looking, I guess he's looking for a point on the play, and the ball came back over by Scott Standen. Out to Andy Heffron. Andy has got an incredible line shot, and hopefully he'll just continue that tonight. The Mason Height hasn't bothered him too much tonight, so. Usually the center blockers are That's good. a bit bigger. Andy Heffron with the serving ace. IPFW leads 9-7. I think we got a little fire from Andy Heffron. He comes back with a big kill, and now comes back the serving ace. And another tough serve. Inside out Mason. Number 20, he's going to keep him in the game. He's 6-7. Just slicing the ball off to the left and right. Hasn't really been hitting the ball hard here as of late, but uh, been very effective. With not quite a tip, just a little harder than that, but uh, in misdirection plays. That works. It's not always power that wins. Swope will be serving for George Mason, try to get them back on the scoring track. Nice, nice, nice hustle by Jay Goldstein. I, 
Shot looked Balls good out. from here, but I think it's a little wide. I thought I saw a touch too, Jim, but I guess not. 9-8 ball game, IPFW leads. Swobe serves long, side out to the volley dons. Fred Malcolm will be serving for IPFW. George Mason act like they wanted to get back into the game. But with a Look at Coach Arnie Ball. Tough shot. Side out to the Patriots. Oh, net violation, George Mason. Thank you. Now, as I understand it, Dan Brand is the down official. There's some things he can blow his whistle and call, and other things he can just signal. Is that correct? That's true. Basically, uh, Dan's job is to watch for the foot violations underneath the net, uh, the net violation, and the touches. Uh, he's, he's not one to call the carries and the double hits. And, well, he, and can, so. he can, what, signal them, but he can't blow his whistle. That's true. He can signal for a carry, and then it's... Uh, the up official's decision if he wants to go with it. Blocked Skippy. out of bounds. Keith Neergarter with the kill on that one. Again, that's a tough shot. The ball's hit out of bounds on our side. I don't see how the defense is going to get to that ball. Neergarter's done a pretty good job taking over for the injured Bob Kramer. Both Keith and Bob Kramer are incredible stories in their own. They came here at IPFW three years ago, and uh, they've done everything with their athletic ability possible. IPFW clinging to a 9-8 advantage. George Mason serving number 15, Greg Kuhn. As IPFW's Jay Goldstein wipes up the floor. Shot of Kuhn. Nice pass by Jay. Just played up by there. Mason. I think we're seeing a new setter in there for George Mason, Hefton Lopez. The Patriots are just a little bit more firepower. IPFW is keeping the ball in play, but wasn't putting much on it when they sent it back over. Game's tied 9 9. With the Patriots serving. Coach Stelly's giving uh, Acosta a little break right now. That could be beneficial, beneficial in the long run. Give him a little rest, come back in just as strong as he started. Well, what's the rules on the substitutions? How many do you get in the ball game? Well, for the MIVA, I believe it's 3-1. What that means is you, have, uh, you can come in three times for the same person. And then you're allowed a total of 12 substitutions a game. Okay. Side out to the volley dons. So basically four guys can come in three times for somebody. Yeah. So you couldn't really switch a whole team as they do in basketball. True. You're limited to your substitutions. And you're gonna watch the game doesn't get out of hand, the team come back on you, you get trapped with your subs in the ball game, not able to get your other people back in. That's right, that's why a substitution, that's a mental part of the game also. Heffron and Malcolm with the block, but it goes out of bounds. George Mason serving, we're still tied here in the third game, 9-9. Fred Malcolm had to reach for that shot a little bit. George Mason takes a 10-9 advantage here in game three. They won the first game 15-13. IPFW came back in game two, 16-14. Again, the Valleon's taking a little roller coaster right here, up and down. Right now, they're a little down. This is about the point they usually fall a little bit. And luckily, they've got nine points already, so hopefully they won't have as far to come back. Jay Goldstein is passing really well tonight. Nice shot by nice Jay. Nice defense by Hefron Lopez. Well, that's got to hurt. You make a great dig like that, and you come back, and a guy hits into the bottom of the net. That's for sure. Hefron Lopez, he's a freshman. He makes a nice dig. If he was a senior, I can see him screaming right now at the person who hit that ball in the net. Number seven, John Christick in for George Mason. So Coach Stalick made quite a few substitutions. A little beach, a little beach here. 
Seeing a little beach digs from Dan Spring out and from Mason. Yeah, night net violation on IPFW. I, I believe Andy Heffron hit the ball outside of the outside center of the there. Yeah, that's all right. Nice call by Chris Wilder. IPFW find themselves in a hole again late in the game. George Mason lead 12-9. Patriots still serving. Chris Gunwald serving for the Patriots. Again, George Mason is really not taking charge. It's just IPFW cannot get anything going. Coach Arnie Ball wants to talk it over. IPFW trails 13-9. You're watching Cable Channel 23 and Cable Channel 9. Welcome back to the IPFW Athletic Center. This is Jim Cawthorn with Moore and Gebert bringing you IPFW men's volleyball action. The Volley Downs are playing George Mason University tonight. And the game is tied at one game apiece, but George Mason is leading the third game, 13-9. We're playing the best three out of five series. Coach Johnny Ball just called timeout for the Volley Downs in the blue and white uniforms. The team is hoping to catcher this game. Or this is a pivotal game. Is it going to be hard to win games four and five if the Volley Dons drop this one? Uh, it definitely is, Jim. They have mentally have to be ready to come out and play on games four and five. Still wasn't pretty, but Fred Malcolm gets the side out for the Volley Dons. I'm sure Arnie Ball doesn't matter how pretty it looks. He just wants that ball on our side, score points. Andy Heffron serving. Nice, nice serve. Nice line drive serve. Side out Mason. They're hanging. Had an open field to hit at. Seems like they're either hitting straight away with nobody in front of them or IPFW is blocking the ball, getting good passes back up the net and rallying. It doesn't, IPFW isn't digging too many of them on the straight kills. That's true, not this game. Uh, last game we saw a lot of defensive play by IPFW. And as I said, said before, defense wins. Jay Goldstein says this game's not over yet. George Mason leading 13-9. Fred Malcolm serving for the Volley Dons. There is that trouble passing. Overpass Dan Springout with a point. Springout's really picked up the slack there. It used to be that Bob Kramer would get a lot of those overpasses for kills. The Springout's probably had four or five of those here tonight. Nice play by Andy. Jay tried to do a little too much with that one. That's true. Trying for the big play and just you know, not to uh, get the ball back over. IPFW has drawn a little closer, training 13-10. George Mason serving. Number nine, Coach, Robbie Bailey back there. Coach Stelix definitely using his bench tonight. There's a nice pass. There's a nice pass. Put that ball up close. Tim Heffron, he goes up for a jump, jump set. Brings those blockers up with Tim. He kicks it outside. You have one on one. Well, Jay just kind of goes up and goes around the ball. He starts out on the right side, ends up on the left side a lot of times. Jay's a very intelligent hitter. He can move his body in the air better than a lot of people I've seen. Nice play by Tim. Kick to high outside. Tony Looney tried to tip it off the block and wasn't able to. It's a tough play. They got to come back with a side out right here. Tim, Andy Heffron may press him just a little bit too much. Anxious to get the ball to Lynette. Thank you, George Mason. Well, they've had a chance to put, you know, win this in three games tonight, and they they get up close to 13, 12, 13 points, they slow down. With the Volley Dons, they get to eight, nine points, and they slow down, so. It's a matter whoever gets the 15, they get up around that point, then you gotta push twice as hard. And you mentioned earlier, they talked about making this game to 21, and you could serve on, you know, either your, you could score on with your team serving, the other team serving, that's, there has to be advantage to some of the TV interviews. We sit here tonight. We don't know if we're going to be here an hour and a half or two and a half hours. It looks like we're going to be here quite a long time. IPFW is picking up the pace. 
Back row attack. And it is a kill. Greg Coon. 14-10, George Mason. Coach Arnie Ball wants to talk it over one more time. Each team gets two timeouts a game. And the Volleydons trail 14-10 in game three. They do. Can IPFW came, come back two times in a row? Is it? They most certainly can. They have it in their blood. They have it in their, if they have it in their hearts, they'll do it. Got a slow motion replay here. I'm not sure quite what play we're getting. I believe it serves George Mason. Jay, Jay Goldstein with a short serve. Nice little pass here. Up to Tim. Got the Fred Malcolm coming for the one ball. Jay going around. Yeah, you can sorry. notice that the blockers are definitely confused right there. And no problem for Jay to put that ball down. Jay went from the left side of the court, right side of your TV screen, all the way over to the left. So George Mason need a road map on that play to keep up with him. IPFW at the side out off the block. And Coach Arnie Ball is putting his ace in. Ball He's spring off. He brought him back last game. Did some great serving and some good back row work. So Paul nice. Spring up, defensive specialist for the Volley Dons. That's why Paul's going in there. He ignited the Volley Dons last game. Let's see if he can do it again. And there we go. We see a point already. Did have a touch. Touch was called. Oh, a touch on the ball. Thought I saw one. I wouldn't. Wasn't Tim sure. Heffron, I believe, he recognizes that he did touch it. He's the first one up with his hands wiggling him, saying, no, I didn't touch it. Free ball. Oh, that's part of the game. You touch that ball, you might as well say no anyway. Block, point, that's game, George Mason. So IPFW probably a half an inch away from having a side out there. They dropped game three, 15 to 10. George Mason leads two games to one. In about two minutes, we'll get into game four, IPFW. Dropped the first game. George Mason took it 15-13. IPFW responded with a 16-14 win in game two. And George Mason took game three, 15-10. Get a look there at some of the fans of tonight's game. Remind everyone you're listening, to I, you're listening and watching IPFW Volleyball on Cable Channel 23 and Cable Channel 10. The voice of the Mastodons. Like I said earlier, Jim, uh, if they lost this third game, I think we might see a little bit different lineup. Not a dramatic change, but a little bit different. Look at Coach Arnie Ball sitting down on the bench alone, trying to figure what play he's going to put in, what lineup he's going to use, and the rest of the Volley Dons are, oh, that's good. Everybody's standing up and saluting somebody over here in the stands. I don't know if we got a birthday or what, but uh, down here in front of Lauren and I, What's Arnie going to do this game? He's got his assistant coaches out at the, uh, in the huddle with the team. He's sitting back down trying to draw up the lineup. That's a little psychological thing that Arnie does. Uh, gives the players a little chance to think. He doesn't have to go out there and scream at them. They know what's going on. So uh, we're going to see what happens. He just goes up to him and says, hey, you're in, you're in. And he goes from there. Look at the end of the George Mason bench. They're a little relaxed down there after taking a 2-1 lead here. That's true. And there's the Volley Dons coming back out for the fourth game. There's a look at tonight's crowd. Good showing of IPFW faculty and staff here, some students, and quite a bit of support from the community. Oh, tremendous support from this community. I'm really impressed. And Coach Ball doesn't make much changes in this game. Tony Looney's back in starting the fourth game. He's played a little bit, I think, in each of the first three. No change. I was wrong. I really think this lineup right here, though, can uh, do some damage to George Mason. Costa. Back in the ball game. Costa serving. Well rested. Tony Lunig, side out. Get the crowd into this. This game could still be pretty attainable for IPFW. They get great crowd support. You know, Pete Hansen, the coach at Ohio State, said it's the toughest place he plays, you know, crowd-wise and people getting into the ball game. Well, I tell you, the fans do make a difference. 
over in Italy where I just played the past two and a half months, our home games, we'd have 4,000 people. And uh, they'd definitely they'd be throwing paper, toilet paper. They'd really help you. Side out. So we've had three side outs to start this fourth game. Tony Looney will be serving for the Volley Dons. We're still scoreless in the fourth game. That's an incredible shot by number 16. He could have just decided to forearm pass it over. No, he busts his butt, gets over there, makes a nice shot out of it. He's almost facing the scoring table and turned and hit the ball cross court. Jay Goldstein. Jay Goldstein. Intelligent shot. He can't make a hard, hard uh, attack out of it, so he's got to do something else. Tips it down the line. George Mason was unable to handle the ball. Seen some excellent rallies in tonight's match. A little net violation on the volley. Line. No, he's underneath. It's like Jay Goldstein had a line violation. The only time you can cross that line is after you hit a shot and it's hit the floor or gone out of bounds. Then yeah, the ball is dead. Play is done. Chris Wilder, the lines, lines person, calls it calls it good. Referee Tom Pingle overrules and says it's out. He may have had a little bit of better shot. He was right on top of it. Chris is a little bit away. I couldn't tell. Now, what is the rule? Is the line in or? The line is in. The, bu the ball must land completely outside of the line. Okay, Jay Goldstein over there arguing the call with Tom Pingle, but to no avail. There we go. That's all IPFW has to do. Controversial call, come back side out, go back and serve. Fred Malcolm with the serve. Oh, a little miscommunication there, Mason. I've got it, yours, yours, I got it. It's and IPFW pulls to within 1-1. One, one. Malcolm serving again. Acosta with a nice cross-court shot, but Polly Don's return it. Tony keeping the ball in play. Nice job, Tony. Again, it wasn't a good set, but they were able to use it to their advantage, and probably the bad set will help them more. We've got the line call here. We'll see if we can get a little we'll bit see. of it. Tim with a right-handed tip. Ooh, that's close. It looks like you got part of the it line to like me. Part of the line's in. Part of the line is good. Jay Goldstein went over the top. Robbie Bailey with the kill for George Mason. They lead two to one here in the fourth game. Mike Swobe serving for the Patriots. Six, seven, senior. Backcourt attack by Fred Malcolm. Very aggressive hit, but the block's there. Jay Goldstein didn't get really get upset he could do much with. He's awful tight to the net. Looked like to me he was going to tip that ball, and all of a sudden he decided to swing. Because he's change-up on it. Change-up, oh, it's... I forgot, Jay does have his change-up. <laughs> serving air for George Mason. They lead 3-1 here in game four. Tim Heffron back serving for IPFW. Uh-oh. Ball handling error. You like to see that. Let's hope Tim goes right back to number 13. You look at that shot, you say, well, that's not too easy. It's not hit that hard. But then they don't realize that ball's coming over, jagging, you know, zigzagging left and right. That's true. A good serve, you want to make float. You don't want that ball to spin. You need to hit it in the muscle part of your arm and not the bone. When you hit the bone, that's when it jumps off to one side or the other. Then it's into the crowds where we can play it. Costa showing his great athletic ability. Nice pass by Andy Heffron. And Tony Lillian doesn't go in the net. He goes through the net. So point for George Mason up 4-2. At this point, Tim Heffron cannot break down. He's the leader of this team. 
He's the quarterback. You can have your hitters break down when that setter goes. That's a little problem. IPS could be, could be in a little bit of a problem here. Trailing 5-2. They need to shut down this rally right now. Nice pass by Jay Goldstein. Second option. And, and it's good. It. That's a nice play. That second option sometimes so quick, the blockers don't have time to, to get there and, and set up shop. Uh-oh. A little problem there. Second option for George Mason, and Acosta drills one home. I think we're seeing a one-on-one -on -one conflict between Acosta and Goldstein. Acosta, just, you can just see him playing. He just enjoys playing the game so much. He's having a good time out there. Oh, he sure does. He's always smiling. And that's, that's, that's the whole game right there. You're out there enjoying yourself. That's what counts. Coach Arnie Ball not enjoying himself too much right now. IPFW trails 6-2 to two here in the fourth game with George Mason leading two games to one, and they're having all kinds of problems. Oh, he's underneath. That may have been a break for the Volleydons. They need something to happen. If not able to change the momentum themselves, maybe that call will do it for them. Tough shot. Jay Goldstein getting the hand on it, but not enough to keep it inbounds. IPFW Volleydons are really going to have to work hard right now. Mason's getting to the halfway mark of the, their third game. Called two hits, I think, on Tim Heffron, I believe. Two hits. Possibly on Jay. I'm Sometimes only the ref knows what they call. Shots wide. George Mason leads 8-2 in the fourth game. Coach Arnie Ball says, wait a minute, guys. We need to talk this one over. Not a happy camper at this moment. No, sure, Arnie not sure what to expect in this game. We saw Ohio State beat George Mason 3-0 on Monday. And IPFW is already down the Buckeyes two times this year. So it was probably anticipating a fairly, not an easy game, but one that I, IPFW could certainly win. And then George Mason goes down to Ball State last night and beats the Cardinals three games to two. And uh, Ball State has beaten IPFW two times this year. So probably getting cross signals, wasn't sure what team was going to show up. And so far, it seems to be the team that beat Ball State, not the team that lost to Ohio State. It looks like it. But again, IPFW started all three games slowly, so they're not out of this by no means. And they played Ohio State in the championship the four-way national, I'm sorry, in the uh, first MIVA match. They trailed, I believe, this much in the fourth game and uh, came back to win that and take the fifth game to defeat the Buckeyes three games to two. Tim Heffron, I believe, is having a little poor set selection. Fred keeps hitting the ball out. I think we ought to go somewhere else with it. And he does to his and brother. Heffron. And he's fired up. That's what they need. Everybody else is a little lackadaisical out there. Andy's playing with a little bit of flair. Andy with a little off-speed shot. Jay with a nice dig. Fred with a little tip. Acosta falls down, back up, nice set. He's going over the top of our short setter, Tim. Chris Gunwald hitting in the empty back row almost. George Mason leads nine to two. Dag Erickson with his jump serve. Fred Malcolm hits it out of bounds again. 10 to two, George Mason, game four. Patriots lead two games to one. You get a little close like this to hear the passion, the freshman, uh, it's not gonna come through, it looks like. Well, Andy Efron's gonna try to make it come through, and he's back to serve right now. Two big kills to get some side outs for the Volley Dons. He's a very emotional player. Oh. That had to help. There's a point for IPFW. Let's hope that gets him going. Jordan Mason leads 10 to three.
We've got to have a nice set out of it. That's a point. Again, nice number block. 13 outside. Toss the back set. Ball's good. I think Fred Malcolm may have flagged that one down. Maybe off the side of his hand. It looked like that to me, too, Jim. that overpass I'd like to mention when you're back serving and the other team does pass the ball over the net and one of your players spikes the ball for a kill that's considered an ace and that's considered an error by number 19 Chris Grunwald Fred Malcolm trying to get the volley down machine rolling Costa again sends the ball flying up the outer reaches of the IPFW Athletic Center, which is the twilight zone. Tonight we're seeing a little lack of aggression in the setters for Mason because they're not necessarily setters. They are hitters turned into setters. Coach Stalick does not have a, a setter. Is this, As, is this a kind of a temporary thing for him, or do you think that's something he'll stick with the rest of the season? I believe so. I believe they're setter who is from Pennsylvania, AJ, uh, was in a car accident last week, and right now he is injured. So, uh, but he's doing a nice job with what he has, Acosta and Chris Gwonwell running the show, looking good tonight. Tim Heffron serving. A little bit of problem on the receiving end. A little communication there again. Jay Goldstein trying to set the ball, but he's got to step over Tony Lewing to do it. And that's not easy to do when you're concentrating on the ball. 11 to 3, George Mason leading the Volley Dons here in the fourth game at the IPFW Athletics Center. I'm Jim Carthen alongside Lauren Jebert bringing you tonight's men's volleyball action. Side out, Jay Goldstein. Looks like Jay's backing up, maybe going for his jump serve. We're going to see if he can get the Madons going. No, it looks like he's just going to serve He's going to serve a deep one. But allows him to get a little bit more on the ball? Or? Yeah, you get a little bit more on the ball. The ball hangs in the air a little bit longer, especially if you got it floating. It's hard to hard to move your feet and get behind it. Dag Erlinson with a shot down the line that goes wide. A little break for the Volley Dons. Ball within 11-4. David Hurst back in for George Mason, placing number 20, Mike Swobe. Thirteen, nice hustle there. Again, nobody's at the net. Steven, you already attempt to block that shot. You know, soft pass to the net, nice set, and just hit all day. IPFW wiping up the floor. Volley Don's trail, 11 to 4. George Mason taking command of game four pretty handily. The look at Uvaldo Acosta back, ready to serve for the Patriots. Probably get a jump serve from him. Well, I'm 0 for 2. He's going to serve deep also. Out to Andy Heffron. Andy's been. Successful earlier in the game, but George Mason's putting the clamps on that one. Looks like George Mason has adjusted their block a little bit and taken that line shot from him. Well, IPFW has never beaten the Patriots. They've lost to them four previous times. The last time was last year at the Penn State Invitational. Thank you, number 13. That ball is out, but he decides to touch it for us. Andy Heffron again with the big hit, and luckily George Mason decided Ralph Seppin Vita. Decided to try to keep the ball in play. He wasn't. I'd go by, sure he was right at. back at Ralph right now. He's not one of their better passers. Just can't let that happen. Valadons cannot let that ball hit the ground. They had the wagon circled, but nobody's in the middle to come up with the play. Nice pass outside to Andy. And he does change his shot cross court. Gets a kill. 
one on one that's really nice to be able to hit against. They need a rally here trailing 12 to four here in the fourth game. Back row attack, let's see if they call that. Oh. And they, Boy, Don, just sleeping on that play. They had a free ball over. Count. Everybody was looking for somebody else to pick it up. Nobody did. Fred Malcolm tips it back over, and George Mason comes back with a successful attack. Side out to the Patriots. That last play we saw, Jim, number eight, Valdo Acosta, jumped, punched the ball, and it went over on all, our side. That is a back row attack. I believe referee Tom Pingle might have missed that. So as long as he jumps from the one, is that a five meter line or six? Th three meter line, three meter line, 10 foot. He's all right. As soon as he jumps, he, front row. He can pass it from the other from the side of that, but he can't hit it, right? That's true. Volley on to the serving here. He's played them a lot in game one and coming back to hunt him here in game four. Andy, a nice pass to Jay Goldstein. Deep it corner, it is good. A backspin to bring that ball down. Bench for George Mason didn't uh, seem to like that call. Let's see if Fred can get something going here for the volley down. Side out Mason. They're not hitting over any blocks or you're almost hitting it an open net. That's true. And you just can't have that right now. Uh, Valadons have to get their block going in defense. 12 to four, George Mason leading. Fred Malcolm out of the back row and that ball is long gone. I might have to go chase that one out in the parking lot, Jim. I'll wait for you. All right, I'll be right back. 13 to 14, George Mason leading here in game four. IPFW. Danny Spring up. Having all kinds of trouble. It's 14 to four, George Mason serving for the fourth game and the match. And IPFW could be facing a five game losing streak if they drop this one, losing four on the West Coast. Just nice last pass week. by Goldstein. Let's see how he wants to hang. Ball is out. And it was out by a foot or so. George Jay wants Mason. to remain. Nice block on the play by George Mason, but the ball carried all the way cross court for hitting the floor out of bounds. Heffron serving for the There's Valadon. a shackle by George Mason, but Ivalo Acosta says, no way, I'm sorry. Goes up over everybody, hitting, hits the ball almost straight down. Hitting that ball over the block is a fantastic shot. You have to hit out and deep. A lot of people say, no, I want to hit that ball straight down, but they got to remember the block's right in their face. Jay Goldstein trying to keep the Volley Dons in this one. Side out to IPFW. Jay's having a nice match tonight. See if he can get him going. Fred Malcolm would say. Dag Erlinson made a great play on that one. The there's, a, there's a look at Arnie right there, not a real happy person. Alongside trainer Shari Eager. The Volleydon's having all kinds of problems. Erlinson had a nice shot on that one. The ball was probably not more than six inches above the net at any one time, and he was able to crank on it and put a nice shot down the line. So Costas serving. This net. Thank you. Fourth game and uh, gets a little greedy. I think this is a nice lineup with the Volley Dons. They just didn't seem to show the stamina, which uh, Coach Ball wants. They come out fairly decent the first game. Second game get a little bit better, and from then on, it was a little downhill. Paul Spring out trying to work wonders he did in game two as he brought IPFW back from his 14-7 deficit to win that one. Oh, and there's an ace. Beautiful serve. I think I'd keep it on number 16. Serve him short again, see what happens. 14-5, IPFW. Trying desperate to call back in. And Paul serves it out. Ball floated on him a little bit. Took off. The spring ops are pretty strong people. He hit his weeds today. 
That's a nice play by Acosta. It doesn't look like a great defensive play, but you're standing there and just play it up. And, and we're out of here. IPFW drops this match to George Mason, three games to one. The Patriots win 15-13, 14-16, 15-10, 15-5. They go to 19-7 on the year. Coach Wayne Staley gets his 401st victory. Coach Arnie Ball's team falls to 11-11 on the year. They will be at home again Saturday night when they host Graceland College. Game time is 7.30. The final volleyed on uh, home contest will be April 16th when IPFW hosts Ball State in the final MIVA match. And that game will be the final home game for IPFW. Hope to see everyone there. I'd like to remind you that that game will also be televised here on Cable Channel 23 and Cable Channel 10. From the IPFW Athletic Center, this is Jim Cawthon along with Lauren Jebert thanking you for joining us for some IPFW Volleyball. <laughs>